Hello, and thanks for watching. My name is Teresa Hanna, and I'm here with you today as a member of the Generosity Ministries team. Our team is charged with supporting the financial viability of the fellowship. Part of that work is building awareness of and encouraging donations to the fellowship's endowment. Fellowship supporters who have donated to or remembered the endowment in their estate plans become part of our ACORN Society. That name was chosen from a Nelson Henderson quote, the true meaning of life is to plant trees under whose shade you do not expect to sit. 70 years ago, a group of visionaries formed the fellowship, and we have watched it thrive ever since. Like those before us, we now have a responsibility to continue the mission of our religious community into the future. Please consider a donation to the Fellowship Endowment. If you have questions about our fund, please contact Fellowship Director of Finance and Operations, Phyllis Schmidt, by emailing phyllis at fbuuf.org. We've created a couple of videos to answer questions from some of our members about estate planning and funeral preparation. The following video includes answers from Lucas Denso, Director of Operations at Wickman Funeral Homes. Wickman has several locations around the Valley and has been assisting families since 1898. Contact information for Lucas will be shared during the following presentation. How much should I plan to save for funeral or cremation costs? What about burial? How much does a cemetery plot or a headstone cost? The cost of a funeral can really vary. Um, our services we offer range from about $1,300 for simple cremation care up to fifteen dollars to $20,000 for some traditional burial options. Um, and when people ask me, it's always the first question, how much does a cremation cost? And I know people might get a little annoyed sometimes because my question is always, let me ask you more questions so I can give you the most accurate answer. The reason for that is that range between $1,300 and $20,000 is a real range. And some of those service options are just different for every family and what their wishes might be. So when people do ask me that, just like you did about a minute ago, I'm not avoiding answering your question. I'm being truthful when I tell you that the range of options for every family is different. When they ask how much to budget, I ask them, tell me more about your wishes. So same with your answer right now. Um, we have a great range of services we offer. There's cemeteries all around that have the exact same answer. So what I tell people is, hey, talk to a professional. We can give you that that real accurate estimate if I'm allowed to ask you some more questions. Uh, the question about burial and cemetery plot, you know, we, um, we operate our funeral homes here. We work with some partner cemeteries around the area and their options are similar. Um, probably about $2,000 to $150,000 on the cemetery side. Private mausoleums, in-ground burial, all different, but it's something that any of us can answer with just probably a five or 10 minute conversation with whoever is interested. My questions are, is there such a thing in Wisconsin as a green burial? What are the options for ecologically sound burial or composting of bodies in Wisconsin? Must people be embalmed before burial? The topic of green burials has become more and more uh, popular just in the last five years. And the interesting thing about green burial is there's no definition of what is a green burial. A green burial means something a little bit different to every person. So similar to my last answer, um, I usually ask people, what does a green burial mean to you? For some people, a green burial means just unembalmed burial in a casket in a vault. For other people, they're thinking a shroud directly into the ground. So when anyone comes to us and asks about a green burial, our first question to them is tell us more about what you feel a green burial means to you. Um, for many people, it at least starts a conversation because certain cemeteries can do a burial without concrete burial vault. Other cemeteries can do a green burial that has a concrete burial vault, but essentially holes in the bottom. So the conversation always goes, tell me more. What have you heard about? What interests you in the green burial side? And we're able to help without a doubt. Um, in the state of Wisconsin, you know, composting isn't currently a legal form of disposition, but once again, uh, for some people, a burial in a shroud directly in the ground constitute composting to them. So the more questions I can ask, the better I can give answers. 
And I can assure people, whatever you feel is green, we can find an option for you locally to be able to help, and we can likely service whatever you're thinking. Hi, I have a set of related questions about planning uh, for one's funeral and burial. Specifically, I'm wondering how we can include our wishes concerning burial in our final documents, such that it is flexible for our um, our children or whoever's planning our burial, uh, to be flexible for future changes in the burial industry. I'm thinking perhaps of more ecological uh, options for burial that aren't yet available in my state or my local area, but might be um, when I actually die. Then I'm also wondering, do you recommend pre-planning one's funeral? Is that true even for younger people? Does it matter how old we are? And is there any kind of charge for pre-planning burial or funeral? Thank you. Pre-planning a funeral has become more and more popular. Um, you know, we, we, we offer a range of options. Some people want to sit down with one of our advanced funeral planners and just let their wishes be known. Other individuals prefer to sit down, let their wishes be known, and fund those uh, options ahead of time. Uh, the reason people fund those options ahead of time is because we can do what's called a cost guarantee with us. If you pay $10,000 now for your funeral service, when you pass away, if it's $15,000 at the time of the service, um, the interest of those funds would usually keep up with the increase so there'd be no additional cost to your family when the time of passing occurs. If the interest of the funds does not keep up, we then discount down our services to the value of those funds. The other important aspect for pre-planning is some individuals need to get on proper programs in the state of Wisconsin. So these funds are placed in the irrevocable trust funded by life insurance. So if you're going to be eligible for some Medicaid programs, it doesn't count as an asset for that individual. On top of that, the great thing about funeral planning is it's fully mobile. Uh, the funds are not held by us. They're held by a third party. Your plan can move with you to Green Bay, Oshkosh, Florida, wherever you go, your funeral plan follows you. It doesn't follow the funeral home. Although we're the ones that pull the information together and pull the funding vehicle into one cohesive plan, that plan can move with you. And the best part, it can change. If you select cremation today and want to veer towards a green burial or a traditional burial in the future, we can still change the plan. Nothing's locked in, the money moves with you and the plan can go wherever you go. Uh, I joke around with some of my friends that are uh, you know, my age and they're in their 30s. And I actually say, you know, well, the best investment you can make is your own cremation. Because no matter what, whether you live to be 50 or 105, it's going to turn out to be a wonderful investment for your family. Pretty boring investment option for a lot of people out there right now. But it is one that uh, we do get people coming in all ages, all backgrounds, prepared to plan ahead uh, for themselves. And so the decisions are easier around their family. And uh, circling back to the question, there's no charge from us uh, for the pre-planning. Some people don't fund at all. There's no fee to sit down with one of our planners. Uh, if you do pay ahead, there's no fee to pay ahead. So there's really no downside to the planning process with us. Uh, for the, the final documents, you know, one of the best things we do is we maintain copies with us because you never know if you're gonna be in a, a nursing facility, a hospital, when the passing does occur. We maintain the documents, the family maintains the documents, and when the time comes, if they're not accessible by the family, we have everything on file here with us. But how can I be sure that my wishes for burial are carried out? In the state of Wisconsin, um, there is a document, it's called the Right of Final Disposition. It's a document that we work with all the time with families. This document is a document that you can assign one individual to carry out your wishes. The reason that's so important is in the state of Wisconsin, when someone passes away, their next of kin are responsible for their funeral planning and disposition. The next of kin isn't always the person you want making that decision. Uh, there's cases in which there's boyfriends, girlfriends that have been together for 25 plus years, but they never got married. When an individual passes away, the right of final disposition oftentimes reverts to a brother, uh, an estranged son, uh, an elderly parent, you know, somebody that maybe wasn't involved in their life for the last 25 years, but state law indicates in the state of Wisconsin, 
the next of kin, whether they be your best friend or your worst enemy, takes over for your next disposition questions. This document, the right of final disposition, can be prepared to elect any person to make those final decisions. It can be your best friend, it can be someone you trust, it can be somebody that you know will carry out your wishes. There's no financial um, strain on that individual. Oftentimes it goes hand in hand with funding ahead, but really it's saying, I know this person will carry out my wishes no matter what. In the state of Wisconsin, even if you plan for a cremation for yourself, if the next of kin decides that's not what I want to do, they have that right unless you elect the right person to be doing it. And again, this is a document that our advanced funeral planners, uh, they have on hand, use it all the time. We have a notary notarize exactly who we should talk to. And then when the time comes to make those decisions, me as a funeral director, I see this piece of paper. I say, okay, I'm not talking to the son. We haven't seen him for 30 years. I'm talking to the girlfriend. They've been together for 25 years. I know who to talk to and they have the legal right to carry out these wishes. My question is, are there city ordinances, rules, regulations in any of the Fox cities about where my ashes could be spread? If I want them spread in a city park, along a trail, a favorite walking place, are there rules and regulations that would prevent that? The scattering of cremated remains has become more and more popular. And with that, oftentimes comes a lot of questions about where can I do it, what can I do, and what's legal to do. Uh, in the state of Wisconsin, there aren't many specific laws whatsoever on the scattering of cremated remains. The DNR, though, does have their own ordinances of no scattering of cremated remains in public waterways. And just about every waterway you can find is considered to be public. Um, you know, on private land, there's no issue whatsoever. On, on private land, you can do as you wish. You know, the scattering of cremated remains on hunting land has been running back for many decades in the state of Wisconsin but the public scattering of cremated remains is one that is frowned upon. Um, Nobody is really arrested for it too often in the state of Wisconsin, but the scattering of cremated remains in a public space is something that shouldn't be done. Um, if you need permission to do so on some golf courses, on some parks, some private land, I know a lot of owners that are very open to the memorialization on a favorite park or a favorite golf course, but the permission needs to be granted to do so. The waterways, um, once again, the DNR has their ordinances. There's no scattering of cremated remains in public waterways, but I also know there's individuals that have reached out and have come to some good resolutions that people laid to rest where they feel it's most appropriate. If you have any further questions about planning or head or anything I've talked about or any additional questions, uh, I'm Lucas Denso at Wickman Funeral Home. Please do reach out to the office. They have all my contact information, whether it's phone, whether it's email, or you want to text me. Uh, if there's any questions that come up, I'm happy to help. And thank you for having me.